So this is our latest concept car. Uh, we've uh, taken a Bentley Continental GT and made some modifications to it. Uh, we've got a very beautiful 17-inch screen uh, from Texas Instruments. And it has a few very interesting features. It's a rear projection DLP screen, and you can see that the screen is actually curved to the one meter radius, um, which makes it really interesting and easy to, to reach all parts of the screen with your arm, because your arm sort of describes a, a one meter radius when it's out there. Uh, it's uh, full 1080 by 1920 resolution, uh, and it has some interesting qualities as well. The input is done optically, which allows us to do certain things like pre-touch, so the UI can react to the presence of my hand before I actually make contact with the screen, uh, which is a very neat trick. And you can see we've got a physical knob that's actually mounted right on the screen. Uh, because it's optical, we can put some registration marks on it, and the computer vision can pick up on it. So it can take on different personalities, depending on what we're doing. It can be volume. It could be temperature on the driver's side or the passenger side, uh, and it'll help you do application navigation with it as well. We've got uh, some lovely 3D maps from our friends at Electrobit, um, which are very, very cool. And it's nice to be in Vegas because there's a lot of very interesting buildings here, and it looks really good on the screen. Uh, we've also done a digital instrument cluster. Uh, if I just start a route here, let's go to let's go to Mandalay Bay. Let's see if that works. Sometimes it takes a second to. There you go. Because we've got integration between the navigation system and the instrument cluster, you can see the turn-by-turn -turn directions have shown up. Uh, we have different modes. You can get the weather. You can get the media metadata of whatever's playing in the media player. There's a list of upcoming maneuvers. Uh, there's a nice old tachometer. And we've also got a rear view camera, which is pretty cool. Very nice, bright uh, screens. It looks really good. Uh, one of the other interesting things that we got going on here is uh, ultra high definition stereo telephony. If my colleague Phil is ready, uh, I'm going to call you. What's that? So we'll give Phil a call. One of the things that Bentley asked us to include in this project, because they were really interested in seeing it, was uh, video conferencing. So what we got working here is. Uh, Hello. Hey, Phil, how's it going? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Uh, can you take us very quickly through what we're listening to here? Very quickly, we're seeing a video conference concept to a car, to a parked car, and uh, with full clarity, full band audio, so right up to 20 kilohertz, as much as the human ear can hear, and also in stereo, so you can hear me talking over in the driver's seat, and now you can hear me talking in the passenger seat. So you can imagine car to car like that. It's really, uh, really something else. Um, it's also full duplex as well. So full duplex if I'm talking, and he's talking. Very natural. You have a very natural conversation. It's, so this is something you can do over LTE, in, in, even in a moving car. Yeah. So this car is equipped with LTE modem. Uh, it's also a Wi-Fi hotspot, naturally enough. Um, it's very cool. Thanks, Phil. All right. You're Thank looking you. good, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We've also got uh, some applications that we can run. We've got Pandora, of course, and Best Parking, which are handy things to have. Um, there is a browser in the car, which is really nice when you're parked and you need to look some stuff up. Um, and the map also operates in full screen mode, which is, uh, is really nice. We'd like to take advantage of all the real estate we've got on this screen and uh, really make it look great. And you had integration with the BlackBerry as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, one of the sorry. Other. Watch your head. Hey, um, have you got the phone? I'll go to the booth. Yeah. The magic phone? No, no, the magic phone. Oh, yes, I do have the magic phone. Ha, ha, ha. I keep forgetting about this. It's sort of a thing we did at the last minute. So what we've done is we've written uh, a web application that's serving up HTML5 from a server in the cloud. It's also connected to the car uh, and the CAN bus. So if you watch your fingers, uh, so from this app, uh, which isn't really an app, it just runs in the browser on any smartphone, I can do all kinds of cool things, uh, like put the windows up, I can lock the doors, honk the horn, I can see what's playing on the media player, I can get stats on what's going on, the tire pressure and fluid levels and all kinds of stuff like that. It's sort of a, the ultimate HD key fob, if you like. Um, yeah, it was and really does it neat. integrate with this center screen as well? Does it kind of is a? It does. Uh, when everything's working good, I can actually plot a route uh, right from the phone. So I can go here. 
<laughs> if the network is working good at the convention center here. Uh, and let's go to... Oh, what's a good one? Bali's, a classic. So I should be able to click on this. And it'll plot us around to Bally's. So if you know where you're going before you get in the car, you can preset the location so you don't need to be fooling around on the screen in the car. And is that working by sort of pinging that data to the cloud and then the car is kind of pulling that down? Exactly, exactly right. Right. Yeah. Okay. We've got a server, a web server running in the cloud. It's got a secure connection to the car and a secure connection to the phone. It's all HTTPS. Great. And just on these instrument um, pluses, Andrew said yesterday that it was a kind of it's in stereoscopic 3D or something. Yeah. So this is something that we've been experimenting with. Um, if we go to the rear view camera, right now it's in 2D mode, uh, which is pretty good. And you can see a lot of nice shoes and pants. Uh, if I click on the button, it may not come across in the camera. But if you get yourself uh, yeah. in the sweet spot, you'll actually get a sensation of depth. Of depth, yeah. Which we think is a really good idea for a rear view camera because it'll let you, instead of just a you know normal small 2D screen, you can actually tell how far objects are away. If you're backing into a parking spot or something like that, it yeah. actually works really good. It came in really handy when I was backing this thing off the truck on Sunday. So. The interest, one of the interesting things about this DLP screen is how the touch input works. Uh, it's not a resistive screen, it's not a capacitive screen, it's actually using computer vision. So behind the same optics as the projector, there's an infrared camera and shining infrared LEDs on the back of the screen. So when you touch the screen, your finger actually shows up as a bright white dot. The computer processes that. It can do, I think, up to 512 points at the same time. It processes that and spits out input events. Um, this is also how we're able to do pre-touch as well, because you can sort of see a ghostly image of your hand as it approaches the moves. screen. Yeah. Yeah, and you can get position information um, and intensity as well. So we're actually going to be experimenting with doing some gestures in this space in front of the screen. I don't know if it would be appropriate for sort of high precision pointing, but we can sure tell if you're going left to right, right to left, and how close you are to the screen. And it's, and it's, it's also, also why you can do that. Yeah. yeah, so we can actually, this is actually permanently fixed right onto the screen. Uh, but on the back of that wheel, there are some black and white marks that we've programmed the computer to recognize and generate scroll events for us. So it's really cool. Um, it's the, the curvature of the screen, the pre-touch, the, the ability to put hard controls on it um, are made possible by the fact that we're using infrared optical input instead of resistive or passive. Oh, and what's DLP mean? What's it's digital light projection. Right. Uh, okay. It's all solid state these days. So remember the rear projection televisions in yeah. the 90s? Yeah. They used an incandescent bulb with a color wheel and stuff. They have very much improved the technology now so that it's all solid state and qualified for automotive applications. So right. we're using LEDs. Uh, there's two million mirrors on an array, which is quite incredible. Uh,